So let's talk a little bit on pipe sizing, which probably you've heard about. You need three data. Actually, you depending on the application or the calculation you're doing, you need one of these. Either you need the interior diameter, which is the one you will actually care if you are doing an analysis on the fluid inside the pipe. You don't care the width or the size of the pipe, you just care the diameter which is internal. Or exterior diameter, this will definitely help you if you are doing some applications on heat exchange or probably you want to know if you will fit the total tube in one, I don't know, maybe you are planning to do a, a case or something for the piping and you want to know the total size. Well, you don't care the inside size, you care the outside size. And this thing right here, the nominal diameter, well, is the, let's say, a diameter they use in order to assign diameters. For example, in the ASME Association, which is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, we have a standard in which we always check out the schedule. What's a schedule is essentially how width is a material. So, for example, this is very thick, this is not that thick, this is very thin, this is very, very thick. We are going to use mainly in, in normal engineering applications schedule number 40 or even schedule number 80. 40 is for heavy applications, for, for example, the uh, movement of wa pressurized water or so on, and 80 is used for very heavy duty, for example, moving heavy oil or maybe in petroleum and so on. We also have this standard which is the BWG, Birmingham Wire Gauge, and it's also about inches of size. Uh, it is more commonly to use the ASME, uh, let's say, nomenclature, actually it's right here. Uh, the Birmingham Wire Gauge is more into copper or materials such, such as copper and so on. So, yeah, just keep in mind that if you are, they tell you it's a 2 inch BW, well, you gotta check on the BWG. If they tell you it's a 2 inch in the ASME nomenclature, well, go and check out the, on the tables of ASME. And this is an example of the schedule 40 and extra heavy schedule 80. This is standard, so this is probably the ASME association. And you will see that they will tell you half inch, actually it's not half inch. You will find out that you have different values right here and right here. And for example, X heavy duty and so on. You have many sizes and the important thing is to know that the actual interior size versus the, let's say, the outside size, it's not the same. So just be sure and keep that in mind when they tell you this pipe uh, was built in a, let's say, in two inches and is scheduled number 40 according to ASME nomenclature. So where do we find that? We need tables of the ASME nomenclature. They will show you the schedule sizing and so on. For example, this one shows you only 40 and 80, but you can find other tables with schedule number 10, schedule number 100, and so on. Since we are going to use only 40 and 80, this table, this table will suit very perfectly to us. So we have 1 8, 1 4, 3 8, 1 half, 3 4, 1 inch, 1 and 1 4 inch, and 1 and a half inch. They show you the outside diameter, which as you can see has nothing to do with the with the nominal size, so if they tell you, well, I have a one inch pipe, actually it is 1.3 inch outside the pipe. So let's say you were expecting one inch and then you... So plenty of people ask me through social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, via email and so on. They ask me if they can get free access to the course or if I have scholarships or whatever. No, I don't, but I do offer a free trial, so you can click here, you can try it for free. You are unsure to commit? Well, you can always join this 3-day free trial, click here, and it will send you to here, 
and you got the option right here the three day free trial you pay now zero dollars and you have three days access you can cancel whenever you want you just gotta select right here you will get access to all this material for three days this cover it's a little bit larger 1.315 inches of the outside diameter and depending on how you choose either 40 or 80 if you choose a 40 you will expect a little bit less thick and if you expect a 80 schedule you will expect a very thick material well not very thick but more thick thicker you want thicker material for applications in which you will have heat exchange or high pressures and so on the inside diameter has also nothing to do with the one inch right here it's a little bit less uh, than the here 1.315 and for the schedule 80 you will have almost less than one inch and the, this data actually is for lazy people guys you don't need it you just need the left side and why do I say it's for lazy people because the cross-sectional area you know it's essentially just P divided by 4 by the interior diameter to the square power so it's actually if you were to do an Excel you will say P divided by 4 and square this value and get me the product of all the material you will get this number uh, oh well no it, this one is the outside diameter and this one is the inside diameter in feet in inches circumference actually you know that the, the circumference or the perimeter of a circle is essentially p times diameter so actually if you want the outside this is just multiply p by this number right here which is where is it outside diameter here 1.05 and if you want the inside p times this value right here and capacity for one feet per second of velocity well imagine you know q equals velocity times area and area is essentially p divided by 4 and the diameter internal diameter to the second power so you want let's say if you set one feet per second this is constant and the diameter well it's already set you will the you will calculate the cube which is the volumetric flow rate right here and the other gallon per minute maybe you want mass per hour so you have it right here also I'm pretty sure they use the density about of 62 pounds per cubic feet and you know cubic feet in gallon there is also conversion and that's why I tell you this is extremely sorry extremely unnecessary this is for lazy people you just need to know this data So, for example, let's do this example. Check out more asthma sizing right here. Go by yourself and check out the 10 inch in a 100 schedule. As you can see, we don't have 10 inch and we don't have 100 schedule. We have only one half in this table, so go and find out the 10 inch and 100 schedule values of the, I don't know, maybe find out the internal diameter the outside diameter and so on you can do this once again in this beautiful web page which is the engineering toolbox go to steel pipes dimensions and you will find out all the important stuff about this now I told you about also the BWG sizing and yeah they have different values similar to the schedule they have this BWG value or number and well it's exactly the same way they will expect you to know for example if you they tell you this is one diameter and they use a BWG gauge of 40 calculate the area or what's the internal diameter well you have it right here if they tell you maybe the uh, the wall thickness you have it right here you wanted to know the cross-sectional area you have everything here it's exactly the same as ASME the only difference is that instead of schedule they use BWG numbers also this size is for lazy people they will give you all the calculations done but you don't need them actually you can do it by yourself 
Let's do this exercise in the other. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface. So for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here, the pump block, and then you have the sections. If you're, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.